and a huge thanks and shout out to Purcell Auto Sales in Canby, Indiana for allowing me to come out and film today. Check out their website with all their used cars. And on with the video. The Pontiac Fiero. The idea of a two-seat mid-engine four-cylinder commuter car, hence the 2M4 designation, started in the late 1970s by Pontiac's chief designer, Hulky Aldacachi, and his team. Based on the GMP platform, the Fiero was originally to be called the Pegasus, but for whatever reason, the name Fiero won. The project wasn't without complications, as Aldi Kachi was somewhat unpopular amongst top-level GM executives, and as such, funding was always threatened to be pulled from the project. And it was. Twice. Despite appearing on Car and Driver's 1984 10 Best List, it wasn't without criticism. The amalgamation of Mazda RX-7 and Ferrari Mondial design and its powertrain configuration scream performance, how it Unfortunately, it did not deliver as such. The Fiero ran from 1984 to 1988 under a single generation, and after 370,168 unit production run, the Fiero name came to an end. It was the official pace car for the 86 running of the Indianapolis 500 race, and all of them were built at the Pontiac Assembly Plant in Michigan, and ours in May of 1984. Hello everyone. In today's full in-depth review, we are covering a car that I know little to nothing about, admittedly. And that is the 1984 Pontiac Fiero. What we are looking at today is a 2M4 SE. It is painted in silver metallic and it does have the gray cloth interior. Just a really cool looking car. It's going to be a full in-depth review of the exterior and the interior. We'll also go over all the mechanical bits. And if I do find pricing for this vehicle, I will show it on screen. Fieros, as the 2M4 designation implies, are mid-engine four-cylinder cars. They are rear-wheel drive and power comes from the transverse mounted 2.5 liter Iron Duke Tech 4 151 cubic inch overhead valve and line four cylinder engine. As its name implies, it's of cast iron block and head construction, utilizing GM's throttle body fuel injection and swirl port heads. It features a 9.0 to 1 compression ratio and creates 92 horsepower at 4,000 RPM and 134 pound-feet of torque at 2,800 RPM. Road and Track Magazine in September of 1983 road tested their Fiero from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 11.6 seconds. 0 to 80 miles per hour came in at 23.2 seconds the quarter mile was hit in 18.2 seconds at 72.5 miles per hour. A top speed is around 103 miles per hour. All Fieros are equipped with 8.7 US gallon fuel capacities and consume 4.2 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 208 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 24 miles per gallon. While a 4-speed manual transmission could be had, our car was equipped with a $425 optional GM Turbo Hydromatic THM123 3-speed automatic, which was the first line in GM automatic transmission designed for a transverse engine application. Fiero is a common car used to convert from the Pontiac Fiero to something that looks kind of like a Ferrari or something like that, and I can see why now. Alrighty, so around the rear of the Fiero. Kind of interesting in the design aspect. Has a very short rear cutoff here. Small little buttresses that come up through here. Goes into the rear window here. Heat extractors for the engine, and these places match, but they do open to reveal additional engine access. 
coming down to what looks like rear quarter windows but they're actually not they're black plastic or actually they're glass but they're they have a blackout panel sc badging your fuel door and of course the obligatory 80s black divider stripe right down the middle of the car just like ferrari's had as you can see this car actually has a luggage area a lug like a luggage rack and that lid actually serves dual purpose it does contain the engine and also has the trunk as we come around the back as we can see more 80s design got the egg crate tail lamps here no orange in this one all red till the middle those are the white for your reverse lamps of course you have the pontiac logo there and of course fiero 2m4 single dual tipped exhaust outlets there just a fun looking little runabout car and as we walk along the profile of the fiero i get a sense for how small this car really was i've actually never experienced one of these in person before so it's really really unique for me right now very very short wheelbase kind of looks like it should have a rear window coming back here but it does have that notch back look instead really really sharply raked rear end styling front end has that brickland style or maybe even mazda rx7 look to it Steering on our car is non-assisted rack and pinion with 2.9 turns lock to lock and a 38.9 foot turning radius. Wheels are the 14 by 6 inch high tech cast aluminum shot in 215-60 R14 BF Goodrich radial AT tires. Brakes are vacuum assisted 4 wheel disc with no assist and braking consists of 9.7 inch vented rotors up front and solid 9.7 inch rotors in the rear with single piston calipers. They can halt the Fiero from 70 miles per hour and around 220 feet. Of course, we have the pop-up headlamps, composite front bumper. Just overall, really cool car. All righty, take a look up front of the Fiero. Really, really sporty, very, very sharp pointed nose. In my opinion, and I may catch some flack for this, but I'll go for it anyway. Kind of reminds me of the same era as RX-7. Except, of course, a lot shorter. Now, of course, this car being silver, and has black accents. We do have the black wing mirrors here. And coming down. Pop-up headlamps, of course. Composite front bumpers. And you got the turn indicator is mounted really dark down below. Fiero badge front and center. Fiero is just a really cool 80s car. All right, so before we hop in, let's take a look at the keys. Square GM ignition key. And the round key for the rear luggage area and the door locks. No smart key access or keyless remote here. Keyholes right in here, door handles right here. The Fiero is a low car. As such, entry into the cabin is somewhat hindered by the combination of low ground clearance and low door height. Once inside, however, it seems very open and airy. The glass roof makes it seem more open than it probably really is. Seats are quite comfortable with good support and adjustments. Steering adjusts for tilt only, and the C-belts are the typical of, of this period GM dual retractor style. And inside, it's actually a little bit roomier than I expected it to be. Taking a look at the door panels here. We do have this uh, gray vinyl here. It's a textured vinyl with a padded armrest, door pull. Here's your door release here manual door or automatic door locks fiero badge here manually adjusted mirrors full carpeting on the lower portion of the door panel there is no map storage however nice wide entry sill does have the fiero logo here and the fisher body logo here it does have a flyaway style handbrake manual seat adjust gm's weird three-point belts very odd placement of the uh, air vents here because you do have this weird floating binnacle uh, 
Gonna take a look at the seats. The seats are actually very, very comfortable. They're very supportive. It is a textured two-tone cloth, and as you can see, stereo speakers are in the head restraints itself. That's a really neat touch. I think the Miatas had that as well. Got that little racing stripe down the center. Nice thick bolstering. This car is in really, really good shape, actually. All right, now we're inside. We're going to pan through the interior and show more details. Non-assisted power or non-assisted steering here it is a three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel. Metal spokes here. Got your horn pad here. Multifunction control here. You got your cruise control. So off, on, resume, accelerate, and your set buttons here. And of course, your wiper washer control, turn indicator control, flash to pass, and high beams. And we've got our instrument cluster forward of us we have an 85 mile per hour speedometer car is reading 59,464 miles on it two rows of warning lights here got turn indicators uh this is the deck ajar door ajar high beam and some other warning lights over here coolant temperature fuel level a 6,000 rpm tack over here and your voltometer is there of course it does also have a tilt wheel and your ignition key and your hazard flashers over on the left hand side, we do have our parking and headlamp control, panel brightness and dim. And then over on the right hand side, we have our rear deck release. Panning over the top of the dashboard, as you can see, despite its age, it's actually held up very well over time. Speakers in the front corners of the dashboard and then the center in the honeycomb area, that's your defroster. And you can see Passenger air vents are over there, and instead of a glove box, you have this little pouch folder. Moving down the center console, let's get the shifter out of the way here. And we got two air vents here. We have our climate controls here, and our basic AM FM stereo cassette player there. Automatic transmission, I really wish it was a manual. Of course, we have the ashtray for the driver and the passenger. Power window switches are here in the center console. And your lighter is here, or can double as a 12-volt power point. This whole area is actually padded. Nice big armrest. You have additional storage here for, like, your owner's manual or anything like that. Looking overhead, we do have a pop-openable sunroof. Manually dimming mirror. Map light. Overhead lighting. And another map light. Padded sun visors with two pockets. This one has a vanity mirror here. And of course they do swing out, but they do not slide. That's it for the interior of the Fiero. to open the front area underneath the air vent here there's a little lever here just lift or pull that down and that releases the front compartment all right and opening the front compartment is very easy it's a one-handed operation no release catch or anything like that it does have a really sturdy post here but as you can see no luggage storage up here it just contains your compact spare tire your brake master cylinder and reservoir, washer fluid, uh, your jack, cooling fan for the radiator, and your headlamps. You also have your engine coolant as well. Um, got your label for your jacking and tire installation, and of course your uh, service parts identifier badge. To release, you just lift up on the hood and lift that latch in. And then we're just gonna let it close. 
two ways to gain access to the rear deck lid. Just press up on this button here. It'll release the deck lid. The other way is by taking your round key, sticking it in the keyhole, turning it to the right. And as you can see, that opens up the engine compartment and luggage area. Here is our luggage area. It is fully carpeted. It is also lined. Believe it or not, it's actually very, very deep too. So there is actually quite a bit of luggage space for such a small car. And we have the owner's manual right here. And to close it, just simply grab it. It's a very lightweight. And there you go. Alrighty, and that does conclude our in-depth walk around look at the 1984 Pontiac Fiero. We hope you found the review informative, and if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews, and our Instagram channel at brinsoj one And of course, as always, thanks for watching.